The whole high tune is very important. You know, I dream about the almighty mountain again, with snow on, and the sun hit the mountain, and the big valley below, and then a front hill, right a hill in front with maybe some old, old trees. Let's fire in. It's red in your mind, there's no problem. So, look how I put that blue on. I will have a little bit of alizarin crimson in that blue, kind of a color like this, you see. When you, when you do it here, it's hard to see the right color. But then I taste it here. I t- that's perfect. You know, a little crimson and blue, it's, it's a wonderful, can be a beautiful winter color, but can be a, a, a night color, a moonlight color. And add a touch of black into that, and you got some, oh, some beautiful moonlight colors. See, this, this color, I think, I will just... And dance it in, dance it in, the way you think. Uh, see, in this case, I would like to show a little bit of white and see, make it move, make it, make it. Uh, see, sometimes you use the corner, the corner of the brush, what gives you all the, all the excitement. See, there. And see, the magic white, is the magic white is on. I told you, the magic white is always on. <clears throat> I always put the magic white on. I don't want to put it on. I don't want to waste any time. They give me 28 minutes here. Shame on them. <clears throat> so and therefore, I always put it on before. But then I always, I need that white in order to mix. See, the technique, my technique can, we have to have that. See, now I have a kind of a bumpy little sky. <clears throat> good, good, good. So we won't worry too much. Now clean my brush. Clean my almighty brush. See, when I hypnotize, I always start off from the light into the dark. There you are. Look, it's kind of a nice, nice moving sky. Kind of a, uh, just the sky I wanted. Good. It's not so blah, it's not so hard and so even. <clears throat> so I'm going to start off with a lizard and then go to blue. I know when the painting build does blue and then red, I'm going to red and then blue. I'm going to use my palette knife also. I'm going to drop that down there. I'm going to wipe that off that palette knife. We've got to get a little blue in that sky. All right. A little bit more Prussian blue. And I'm going to pick this up now. Let's go right up to the top of the canvas. Now, you know, when Bill comes up here, he, he fires in like this in a lot of different directions. Okay, he goes like that. And what you, what he sometimes will just test the color and see, do I want more red in it? So if I want more red, I just go to my palette. Now, I think I do. Let's go down and get a little more red in there. You never know until you look at the color. That's why you test it. So I'm going to go back down to the palette. I'm going to add a little more alizarin into it. Mix that in. See what we get. We'll get a variation here. Looks pretty good to me. All right. This is going to be more in a bluish violet tone. I'm going to wipe off the knife again. I could just do what Bill did. He puts a tree down here. Let me do that. Just wipe that off. That's coming in later. Who cares? Okay. Let's pick this up again and see what we get. See if the co- see what the color looks like. Okay. It's a little different, huh? So I want to point out, while I'm stumbling this up there, I'm leaving these little white areas, little holes. They call these holidays when you're an art or a painter. Those are like holidays. So you want to do this sometimes. Move that paint around like so. Leave these gaps in there, okay? And as you're coming down, just you're losing paint. So it's softening the color down towards the mountain, down this way. So you start off with a lot of paint, but then you're kind of losing paint. I think I want a little more red in there. Let's do it. I'm just going to go with a little more red because I just want to match the color closer. A little more red in here. Fire it in down in that dollop. Have paper towels around you guys. I want to get a little more red in there. I like a lot of colors, so when I'm painting, sometimes I, you know, I just add more as I go. 
Let's try this. And let's go up on this right corner. It's got a little more of a violet gray to it. You see that? You can vary this. If you get a new color, just go ahead and um, apply it. Apply that color everywhere else. Back down to the palette, let's get more. I know it looks a little bit abstract right now and kind of impressionistic, but that's a good thing because all paintings are really kind of an abstract form to start with. I'm getting a little bit more paint. And when I say a little bit, I don't mean a lot. If I like this color up here. Okay. So I'm going to incorporate this into this. Look how I push it in. We might get variations of color. I see the red glowing through Bill's sky and stuff from the, the paint coming out by not mixing too well and uh, matching up with the blue kind of, the colors are kind of in there. Down to that dollop coming up here. So it's got a little more of that red in there because I, I like the way I see Bill's uh, the red flowing through the blue. He's, it's because he didn't mix much with his, um, his brush. And by the way, if you want this darker, while you're doing this, just push harder and the dark will come out more in your brush. Okay? So you got you to gotta kind of press a little harder to get that dark to, um, to come out. Look, see this? Look, see if I press harder, more dark comes out. Now, instead of cleaning your brush, what I want you to do is, and Bill didn't do this in the video, but this is a good way to do this. Come down here and use the bottom. He does it in a lot of paintings, though. You see, I'm just going to wipe it off here to get over, get that clean, get that going like this down here, because all this is going to get dark eventually down here. And all the colors up here are going to be synergenic with everything anyhow. Now, you got a couple of options here. I want to explain this as thoroughly as I can. This is fun. Watch this, you guys. You can use just this semi-dry brush right here. And you can come up and do this and blend this out and leave those holidays there. Just do this so some of the light just pops through and looks kind of like a background backlight coming through. And you got another option. You can um, clean this off here again. And this is something new for you. You can literally watch this, guys. Bill would go in and hit that, um, clean his brush off uh, with the mineral spirits. And there would be, and he say it was a dry brush, but you can act, but there was still some residue from the mineral spirits in there. Uh, it wasn't perfectly dry. So you can go to your magic clear, watch this. You can dip in. Just touch the surface, don't go all the way to the bottom. You can make the brush a little bit more uh, fluid, like, like as if you had thinner in it. And you can come up here and soften it with the Magic Clear, like Bill would have gotten the same result by having some of that oil in his brush. Okay, see what this is doing? It's creating, you got options here. You can go completely dry with the brush, or you can do this. And this gives it that look that Bill had in the sky. So this way you're not using anything that's um, like mineral spirits. You're just environmentally safe and you're having a lot of fun with it. But that's creating the same look that Bill would have. So can you guys see that? So you don't have to do anything but touch a little bit of the oil. If you, and, but if you don't want to, you can still blend it. So what kind of stroke am I doing? I'm just doing an X stroke. I'm going down and over, down and over like that. So this is this is already helping the paint to thin a little. It's always it's also making it a little bit more of the same kind of appearance that Bill had in his work. That was beautiful. This is one way to do it. And then if you think you're getting too much paint, like if you hit too much of something right here, you can model it out like this. Look, just go crazy with it like that. Or you can come back down to the bottom and use that bottom of the, the painting as a way of cleaning your brush and then adding a little more oil on the on your brush if you need it. Okay, that's a real good tip for you guys. Uh, Lizard and Crimson and Thalo, I mean, um, Prussian Blue. I'm gonna get a little dark in this corner, but I want you to know while I'm doing this up here, I'm gonna tell you that Bill 
He really didn't want to use the thinner if he didn't have to. He would have preferred doing it this way. There you go. Those corners should be a little darker. See that? So when you're up in the corners, you should have a little bit more dark. That, that pulls in the light, force, forces the light towards the center or wherever your, your uh, golden ratio could be, which could be over here. If you think about this like this, and boom, and it comes down like that. Think about that, you guys. Even though the mountains are lit up, your golden ratio could be on this side. I'm going to get a little bit more dark because I'm sneaking up on it. I'm not trying to, trying to go too fast with it. All right? That's what I wanted. See that? See how beautiful that is? So it's just a matter of just looking and seeing what you want. And that pushed the paint down really well. I'm going to hit this corner with a little bit more. And then I'll blend it again. See that light glows back there. So when you put the dark over here, the light glows in really well. It really does bring out everything. As long as I've got artistic license here, let's say you, you took this uh, dark down a little too far. And that can happen to anybody. You know, Bill was very strategic when he put this up here. You can take an art wipe, which is just a baby wipe, and you can remove some of this paint just to keep the glow there where you want it. Just, just take the paint off like that. And then go back and soften it all again. Really hit this soft. Now, I don't know if you see this on camera. There's a couple of things going on when Bill paints like this. He gets the paint in hard for areas where all the paint comes out real deep. And then what he does is he comes back with a light touch so that when he softens things, he preserves certain areas like the light right there, some of the light going through right there. So he does it, but sometimes it's really hard to see it. So right now I'm just doing the lightest touch. And if I want a little more dark, I could pull it in like that. So that's the same thing with the palette knife. See, now I will, I will use the sap green, sap green and black, sap green and black, or blue, you can use blue in that too. See, zap, green, black, and blue. See, now I create a couple, uh, uh, I create a valley there, so maybe there. Isn't that a beautiful tree standing up there? Look at that. See, the way, the way you do it, because that is, the way you get the tree so wonderful with the branches flying around, you see? See here, maybe I go a little bit tippy up there. That's beautiful, see? Maybe here a little touch. Look, look at the looseness, look at that. I mean, you can, it's most impossible to do that with a fine little brush. You work your head off. It's not good. See? <clears throat> no, I want to have a dark on the bottom here. And the way I do the strokes, look how I take the paint off. The, it has a kind of a curve. The brush has, uh, creates a kind of a curve. Can you see? Uh, I always call it the dog paw. See? Now, if I, I, I just use this to show you. See, I will cover that all up with other colorful colors. See, if I make a tree here, watch how the tree comes. Look at that. Now, you... Whoever argues with me now, I think they are crazy. There is no finer tree, a fur tree you cannot, I cannot see. I just can, I tried all kinds of things. You never, never make a tree nice like that with the fine brush. But I have painted 40 years solid. And the outcome is I still, I can make the same trees as some, but this is a teaching thing what I do here with this, see, watch. Now I make an open brush. See? Look at that. This brush has already the tree. Can you make a close-up shot on this? This brush has the tree branches in it already. See, now in this case, I would like to make a, 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 a leaf tree. See? Look at all the leaves. Can you see the loose? Look at, look at this shot alone, this push alone. A lot of branches hanging down. See, in the middle you can fill in a bit more, 
But isn't that beautiful? You can have needle trees, and then you highlight that from one side, and you put the tree trunk in. This what I do here is just a teaching ID. And this, this is very important to know. <clears throat> so we will go on with the trees here. I get so excited sometimes I can't help doing that. You know, something. Th this is for I felt when we talk about God and religion, when I felt God is with me, because I felt so powerful, and I thought, God, you are wonderful. You give me all that power to do those wonderful things. Wouldn't you say, thank you, Lord, for letting me have all those things? Okay, now maybe I talked enough about that. Now here I will put the other hill in. See here on the bottom maybe I will show a little bit of, first I will put the little uh, tree, uh, tree trunks in there, put tree trunks in there, put tree trunks in there, see? Put the other tree trunk in there, and if you want to have trees in the back, see there are some, make them a bit lighter so they disappear in the distance, see? There you are. Now you highlight that. I will use the other brush. We we'll use the other brush. You can use a smaller brush. You can highlight that with a bit of yellow. Put a bit of sunshine in. See, see what I do here, yellow. Maybe a touch of, uh, uh, I use this light blue what I have here to finish it up. And then maybe here, just a touch. Light is coming from here. Isn't that wonderful? Hit it right. Thank you are the sunshine. You make the day. Yeah, one side is a shadow, other side is the sunshine. You can do it with the other tree too. Again, again, here. Fire in, fire in. See this, this here. See here on the bottom, I will just create a kind of a green valley. That's the bottom of the valley here. <coughs> See? That's a happy valley there. Bit of trees there, grout there. More white, touch of white here. See, have it as light as possible. See? If you want, you can, you can, you can, you can, whatever you want. There's so much you can do. See how I take my paint off? It's always heavy, strong paint. A nice watch, this little bang, bang, bang. It doesn't come good enough, it didn't come. See what I do now, I go into the magic white. That's a good lesson again, because it is thicker than the paint underneath now, and it will not give me the figures. What I do now, I went into the magic white and thinned that down just a little bit. Now watch what happened now. Now I show you how easy it is again, and it's amazing when you get the philosophy of this technique. Oh, you got it, look at that. Isn't that wonderful? Maybe here a little bit of highlights there. I want to have just like you see a little, you would think in your mind there's a water runoff here. And one thing I want to do is go back and show you uh, some tricks, you know. And I want you to remember that Bill did this in 27, so 27 minutes on screen. And what we're doing is if you were teaching a class, just to reiterate this, this would be a four-hour class at least just to break down what Bill could do in 27 minutes. So let's just go in and do some things that you guys should learn just to have fun with it. And what I'm going to do is grab a fan brush, and I'm going to go up to the sky, but I'm going to grab some magic white that's been sitting out. Now, the, we didn't get, we stopped at a certain point on here, and we're going back to it to embellish it. So. I'm going to give you little tricks on how to go back in and do things on Bill's paintings that you guys should want to have fun with. So I'm going to go to the sky right now with my fan brush, and I'm going to add some extra white behind here. Now, he didn't do this, 
on the um, video, but I want to show you how you can improve things as you go. Bill always said, if you listen to his videos really closely, he always said, hey, don't give me enough time. He, he really wanted to do a lot more. So this is kind of cool. Look how I'm brightening up this background. So I can even add a little more white in here to improve the look. Now, if this is damp, you're going to get a little color on your brush. And I did. Just a, Let's go down the palette so you can see it. I have just a little bit of gray in there that, that it got picked up. Okay. So what you can do is just go ahead and wipe your brush. Just get off a little bit of that off. And then go back down and get a little more white. You know, it just takes a little swipe, you know. Let's get a little bit more white. So fun to paint Bill's paintings because, you know, we can just keep adding to what Bill did. That's, the, that's our job, isn't it? So you're going to add a little white up here. And then you don't have to add too much. You can go up here and then use this tone. See, it's graying down a little, but it gives you more nuance. Come down here, add a little gray underneath it, borrow it from here. If it's still damp, you can get little gray tones in there like that, look. And then just feather it out like this. This is so much fun to go do a Bill's painting. This, this is great. And get up here like this. Maybe you want to go a little harder, push the paint out. Reinvent your own sky. Now watch, blend down in this tack. I told you guys, look, see how tacky this paint is? It's very tacky now. So when it's tacky like that, it gets you this ability to blend these colors down softer underneath, look, and have more control. That's, that's nice, isn't it? Look. And then just kind of do this if you, if you want. Just soften it down. Do an X stroke. And then you got more power in there. Look, see, that's what, isn't that beautiful? And wipe off your brush. You can always go back and do a painting two or three days later. Okay, guys. So now we got the um, we got the sky done. And we have this done, that done. So now I'm going to give you a couple ideas. If this is still very, very damp, you can just continue what Bill's doing because it's still wet on wet. If you wait a few days or, like I say, you can get a little bit more control. Um, but you have other options here. So let me give you a little clue. I am going to take my one inch brush and a little medium. This is the Bill Alexander Magic Clear. Okay. I'm going to dip into it. Okay. I'm going to do two things for you. I'm going to dip into this and I'm just going to, if this is dry, you can go down here and tone this with this, this clear oil. You can literally come up and tone it. In other words, you're just making it slick and oily. But the, the Magic Clear is great because it's got properties you need. After you do that, you put a very thin coat on. I'll show you what you can do now. Just wipe this off. Because okay, we're going to the trees in a minute, but I need this prep. I need this prepared before I go down here. So you wipe it off and get a very thin, thin coat of oil down there. Now let's mix a dark color. So we can come up with something. If you don't have sap green, we can actually invent it. I'm going to put the Van Dyke Brown right here. So I'm making my tree color. Okay, that's that's your base, your Van Dyke Brown. I'm wiping it off the knife. I'm going to add uh, Lizarin Crimson first. That's a very dark color. So now I'm adding the Lizarin to it. And I'm just wiping the knife. I'm going to add um, Halo Green. A little bit of that into here. So when I add it to phthalo, this is turning into a deep, deep, dark green. Okay. Very, very dark. All right. I'm going to add a little bit more. Just bear with me. You'll see. Okay. I'm wiping off the knife. When you wipe off your knife, you guys, and you press down real hard. Watch this. Everybody watch this on the palette. If I press down really hard and pull it out like that, I barely have any paint on there. So when I'm wiping off, I'm not getting that much. I'm saving a lot of paint. 
If you go too far, just pick it up, bring it back, do it again. And look, there's barely any paint there. So I'm just gonna add a little more phthalo green to it. There you go. Yeah, that's getting it more into a deep green now. The brown is turning it differently and the red. So it's giving it a warmth and also um, depth and darkness. All right, let's load it up. See that, pick it up and let's load up the brush. Maybe I'll add a little lizard and just grab it. Watch this, I, this is fun, you guys. This is, this is why when you do Bill's paintings, you are on another level of painting. You're not, you're not restricted to all the detail he was talking about, even though he did all that detail, but knowing how to mix your paint is really important too. <clears throat> but it also gives you the freedom when you do this to even go back and do fine art on it. That's kind of fun too, huh? Let's move, let's put this one a little higher right here. I'm just gonna try to do what Bill did, get close to the idea. You know, I'm not painting exactly like the way Bill did it. You know, little, do it your way, what he would say. That's a deeper color there because there's it's drier there. <clears throat> All right, put it in. And if I add a little white to it, it will push it further away. He didn't do that, so I probably won't do it. But a little bit of white in there would push it behind it. It would make a lighter tree. I might do one just so you guys see that. I'll show you, I'll show you just for the heck of it. I might even wipe it out, but we'll see. Now, when you get a new color, like the red in there, make sure you always incorporate it somewhere in the, in the areas you were working before. Because a lot of times, you know, I'll just hit that corner there. A lot of times what happens is you, you get a new color there and you gotta make sure that it's, going with the whole picture. I'm gonna do something interesting here. You know what I can do? I can watch this guys, watch this. I can grab a little of this blue, watch this. Put it right here into the same color that we're using. This is an add on to what Bill did. This is, Bill did not do this. I just want you to see this. Then you can do whatever you want. I have the same synergenic colors here. So watch this. If I want a tree that's further away, but still very tall, I can use that color as a distant tone. And he would do this in some of his books, if you looked at his books, to create a different, a, a certain amount of depth. You see what I did there? I pushed the tree back. It's just an add-on to what you can do. So I wanna carve in my tree trunks. They'll go straight up and down, okay? Straight up and down. If you feel that it's too dry and it's not working, you can take your knife like this and you can just draw down like this, watch. When it's really, really wet, with the wet on wet technique, it goes in so much better because you're carving into really, really wet paint. Here you might have to do this. There's so many ways to do things, see? Now you're gonna wanna bury that. And then you're just gonna wanna get these sticks in like Bill used to do. You're grabbing wet paint now, so watch. You're putting a few of these up here. Get into that, all that down. There's a certain amount of time on television to get so much in. I want you to watch what I'm gonna do now. As long as you have this blue gray down here, that is a reflective color that will go on the back of the tree. So watch what I'm gonna do before I get to the light. There you are, look. It's on the right side where all the dark would be. And if you have to add more dark, you can, but just a little bit of that, look, look what I'm doing. I'm adding it into the dark. Just so you know, that's something that he could, didn't have a chance to do in a half hour. So you can grab a new brush, Okay, which Bill always said, you know, keep two brushes on hand. One brush is for the light, one for the dark. So you can take now, watch this guys. I can grab yellow, clean brush, put it down here. 
Now here's my green. Look, see, it's already prepared. Okay. Now I can grab a little magic white. And this is where he would add magic white so the paint would stick. Because you've got thicker paint on there, you know, because when we made that dollop over here, that dollop, the paint went on pretty thick. But it's not thick everywhere. It's sort of semi-thick in places. Okay. Let's grab a little more yellow. And you always hear Bill say, I wonder where the yellow went. <laughs> and we can put a little touch of uh, alizarin in it, a little bit. Just don't, don't work too hard. Just a little. Pick it up. Let's go to the light side. So you want to fire it in like this. Push out like you did before. Come in and lose that graffito in the middle. Follow your pattern that you were doing with your trees. You even want to go over, the, over that a little bit. Do you see that? So I want you to look at that brush closely. You got mud here, but you got light there. See, it's dark here from touching the, the, the wet dark, but you have light here. So I'm going to show you something clever. Okay, so I'm, I'm taking the paint that's still really good on there. The, the middle is, uh, the end of the brush is dark, but that's light. So why not use, up, use it up? So you can come down here really kind of low and press this up, look, to start creating your grasses. Isn't that nice? That's really nice. Look, that's a happy feeling. Doesn't that make you feel good? Because that way, look, we just keep going like Bill would have gone in a half hour, you know, pretty, pretty magical that he could do that, you know. But this is a clever way of cleaning your brush also. A little bit of magic white, a thinner paint goes on a thicker paint. Tap it in. Still got your red there too. Push it to the left. Go in the middle a little bit too, look. See that? Watch us push, push in the middle. Push out here, push up there. And then very lightly into the dark. See this? Down here, just very lightly. You, you want to preserve the dark at the bottom. Because you don't want it in the light so much because you're coming down into the shadowy area. That tree may be casting a shadow. You never know. And then push it like that. Get a little more inventive, you guys. Push it like that to the left. This. There is an advantage to painting a little more rapidly. Uh, that advantage is that you're more, you're more expressive. You're getting a little bit more, you know, oomph in there. That's what Bill would call it, oomph, right? And then just kind of get in like that. Boom, 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 here and there. You got to. If you get a little rambunctious, and a lot of people do, when they get those that light, they go all crazy with it. Sometimes you got to be very, very controlled with the light. And Bill did this in the painting. I believe I remember that. I'm going to grab just a little touch of medium, dip in just a little bit. I'm going to go softness because I need a thinner paint to go into that um, into that tree to, to push the dark in. So watch this. You can come back and add deeper holes in there. And Bill did this in the video. And you can improve whatever you want. So if you lose, if you lose some of that tree and it gets way overlit, just come back to your dark. I'm going to pick up a little magic white. I'm going to just model this in here just a little bit like that. Now, Bill didn't use the palette knife because he was going through the painting, you know, just like until he got here. I'm going to dip in, tap it. You need a, you need the paint to. Let me show you on the pal, on the canvas. See how thick that white is right there, the, the lighter yellow. If it's not thinner, it's harder to go on. So let's put a nuance here, a little tree that's lighter. You know, make up your own little idea. It's brighter now. Do you see that? If you want a little red in there, don't be shy, watch guys, because the color's got to be everywhere. So I can pick up a little bit of alizarin, drop it in here, tap it a little bit. Let's just add a little bit of this just to see how it looks. Looks pretty good to me. 
because he's got it in there. Okay. And then you want little nuances down here. Look, a little bit higher there, a little bit in here, something different there. That's like fillers. You see, you keep the dark at the bottom, though. You push that up, gives you another level. And, you, you know, there's always going to be levels in your painting. Happy ever after. See, I applied enough with my colors, and now I feel there's a beautiful, powerful hill in front, maybe here a little bit more red, and that is a happy ending. You enjoyed it. You learned something. I put some extra trees in there. You never see them anymore. Thank you for watching me. Bye-bye.